Good morning and welcome to the live stream. Um, in this one, we're going to be doing something a little bit special because we're going to be talking about batteries and how to swap connectors over. Um, when I built this, y'all might have seen the video where I was talking about this connector is a JST 1.25 and it really limits the amount of power that can get from the battery into the flight controller and distribute it out to the motors. So um, what I want to do is swap over the connectors from these tiny little JST uh, 1.25s and we're going to be putting in these bigger connectors that are the power whoop or the JST 2.0 connectors and uh, this will be a little bit of a process but hopefully you'll uh, learn something um, and ultimately what I'm going to be doing is I'll leave um, a couple of these batteries with the smaller connectors and a couple of these I'll convert over and then I will set up a power meter and then we're going to run the battery through the meter and then plug the whoop into the other side and we'll do some uh, power testing to see exactly how much current can be drawn um, from the two batteries and, and hopefully that'll prove um, what I'm saying as far as with the different connectors you can get more power out. Alright, so to get started, um, you can see here I've got, gone ahead and broken the case off of this uh, battery here and then I've exposed the connectors and then there's this little um, plastic piece to keep things from uh, shorting. So I'm just going to show you all how to safely break that case off and get at the connectors so we can uh, make another uh, pigtail to solder in. So first thing, uh, there is a white silicone in this and I'm just going to get a heat gun uh, like so and I'm just going to, I don't, I want to hold the battery so I'm not heating the battery up. I want to be pointing most of the heat at the connector to get that glue broken loose. So I'm just going to do that so that I can feel with my fingers if the battery is getting hot. I'm just going to kind of hit both sides of this. Sorry for the noise, but this is kind of how this goes. All right, that's uncomfortable to hold. And now I'm just going to take some pliers. And I'm just going to kind of work at it. See, there you go. And see how that stuff just breaks, breaks away a lot easier than fighting it without heating it up first. All right, and so then also um, with this one, I cut it in half. I'm going to try and take this one and um, we're trying to try to keep the connectors one piece. I'm going to try to just work it out. But if you do break it in half, it's fine. We can hot glue it all kind of back together. Um, really, it's not a huge deal if the connector is uh, busted because it's just there to hold the plug in place. And we can use some hot glue later to get that all back. Now, do be careful if you're using metal pliers or uh, cutters or whatever, the connections in here, if you do short them, it'll flow through the, the cutters and you'll um, hurt the lipo, you'll short it and it'll get hot and poofy and all that bad stuff. So just be mindful when you're digging around that you might be hitting something that's... Okay, so we got that one off as one piece and now we got to open up the lipo like that and then we're going to uh, another quick note these are ceramic tipped tweezers so they do not conduct electricity so if you see me digging around with these and you're like oh cool I can just stab them with my tweezers if you have metal tweezers then you cannot do that because they might again short that's why I like the ceramic ones is because you can poke around in electronics and not worry about having to short stuff so we're just going to pull all this gunk out and then flip that up and okay so that's the plastic piece that holds the two terminals um, without them ever getting pushed over or touched and so then there you go that's how you get the terminals exposed so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my soldering iron We'll use my Heiko today. Um, so the next part is if you can buy these pigtails, go ahead and do that. It's a little bit easier, but if you want to go ahead and just do like a bulk order like I did, you can get like a hundred of these things for really cheap, but you do have to have um, terminal crimpers like this. I am all about lowest cost and buying in bulk, so I'm a little bit keen to getting these uh, little terminals and uh, crimping them myself. 
again, if you don't want to do that, you can, I think, just buy a bag of these little jumpers and then cut them and uh, go that direction. So these are a little bit finicky. Um, just a quick, a real quick tutorial kind of on how to crimp stuff. Um, I like to uh, grab this back um, fingers and then kind of pinch them together just a little bit. And then I'll bring in my wire and that way those fingers that I just pinched together hold on to the um, the insulation on the wire a little bit better. And then you just find the appropriate sized die in your crimpers. And there you go. And you want to make sure that it is clean and that the um, insulation is being held by the back two and then the wire uh, strands themselves are being crimped together by the front two. Um, when I first did this, it took me like, no joke, like, I don't know, probably 20 individual things, just experimenting and trying to figure out how to do it. Crimping these things is not, I don't know, some people might find it really easy. And once you know how to do it, it is, but, uh, just learning and, you know, trial and error without having someone train you, it can take a little bit of time to figure out just where to put the wire and how much pressure and how to bend it and all that stuff. But... Um, once you figure it out, then you can make your own terminals and make your own crimps, and it's it's pretty sweet. All right, so I've got those two done, and sometimes when you crimp them, um, the die, I mean, I don't know, I guess it might be because of the quality of the, the crimpers I have, but um, I've found that I have to, it's always helpful to come in, and um, the width of the terminal is a little bit too wide to go into the um, terminal block, and so I'll just come in here and kind of lightly reshape and uh, squeeze the uh, crimp and make it a little bit uh, not as wide. Bring it in just a little bit. All right, so then uh, positive goes on this side and then negative goes on this side. Oops, see that one's still a little bit wide. Let's just squeeze it a little bit more. It should very easily uh, go into the terminal block, and if it's fighting you, then just kind of crimp it a little bit more. There we go. Cool. Okay, so now we've got our power whoop connectors ready to solder into the um, lipos. Um, so first things first, um, I'm going to go ahead and mark because you can see the red is positive, black is negative. Um, once you solder those off, it's hard to remember which connectors went where. So I recommend getting a um, permanent marker and just wherever the negative is, just make a little black mark so that you can easily visually recognize, okay, yeah, that's where the uh, terminal came off. Um, also, throughout this entire process, screwdrivers, soldering tip, anything that's metal that conducts, don't ever touch both terminals at the same time. Even if you're cutting, um, like these are not connected to a battery. So if I wanted to cut those, I could just cut it like that. However, once they're connected to the battery, if I'm trying to cut the terminals, you cut one terminal and then you cut the other terminal, making sure that the two wires don't ever touch because um, as you cut it, it shorts. A lot of people know that, some people don't. So just kind of a, a warning heads up. Uh, let's see here. There's still a little bit of this white gunk on here. Let's clean that off just a little bit. Alright. There we go. Being really careful not to short stuff. And I've got my black mark there so I'll remember uh, which terminal is negative. There we go. And so, okay, this is another kind of a, something that I've learned because I've messed it up so many times. Um, if you somehow rip these uh, little tabs off, um, they have soldered on one side and it's really helpful to just basically solder back into the little solder blobs that are already there. If you somehow rip one of these tabs, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get a, a nice solder blob back on the, the little tabs. So as, be as careful as you can not to, to rip those or damage those and just reuse um, the blobs that are already there.
goes a long way in just making things easy. So uh, for this, I think I might make this a little bit shorter. Let's see. Let's do it just like here. And I can cut those because they're not connected to the battery. And then I'll strip these back. These are going to be some really short leads. All right, and now I'm going to tin these up so that they go into the battery easily. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can, I'm going to get my second hands, my helping hands, whatever you want to call it. All right, so we're just going to move these out of the way for now. All right, so, ooh. We'll grab the battery. And again, you can see that the um, ground is on this side and we're gonna go ahead and just take this, line it up and solder it in. Um, also, okay, so these are gonna bend, the, fl the little flaps are gonna bend back in. So I'm gonna want the battery to be like that. I mean, I guess it's very similar to how you see here. See how the battery is um, soldered on facing back that way. So when it folds up, it's sticking out. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna flip it over this way. And I'm just gonna remember that uh, ground was this, this one right here. All right, let's do it. You don't need too much heat because um, everything is already tinned and you don't want to put much heat into the battery. This positive connector is being a little bit finicky. And you do want to take your time. This is a definitely a spot where you want to get a really good solder joint. There we go. I'm happy with that. All right, so now we'll take this plastic little divider piece that was uh, originally in it. We'll stick it back in. Like it, it's kind of almost like a little T and the part of the T that sticks up goes between the um, two terminals. So we'll fold those back over just like that. And now I'm going to put some hot glue in there to make sure and keep everything held together. Hopefully this hot glue gun is warmed up. Let's just kind of... Yeah, there we go. Cool, and I'm just going to fold this back on top. And I'll add a little more hot glue protect the open terminals there we go so I could put these back on but I think I'm just gonna leave the hot glue as a, I mean I think that's gonna protect it just fine so once I let that cool then we've got our ready-to-go battery it's not that difficult I mean I guess heh. once you know what you're doing and once I guess hopefully this video makes it not difficult so you can feel confident that oh yeah that's not that big of a deal I can do that um, just the biggest thing is being really careful with the terminals and then not shorting it. Those are kind of the two uh, things you need to be really careful with. Um, so yeah, okay, so let's, I guess while that's cooling, um, I can kind of talk about these. Now, I've already done some over here, so let's just talk about this. So this is a battery that I got, um, and this is specifically not for Tiny Whoop, but for the brushless Mighty Whoop. And these guys pull a lot more current because of the brushless motors. And the Tiny Whoop 2.0 just couldn't handle the amount of current that was being drawn. And so I went ahead and swapped over to an XT30. Um, a lot of people say that's overkill, but oh my goodness, it made a huge difference in punch out and the uh, available power being drawn out of these batteries. So I know that this made a big difference for my Mighty Whoop, and I'm assuming that and I'm fairly confident that going from a uh, 
small JSD 1.25 to a power whoop, and everyone says it makes a big difference. So it's just kind of the same principle. Um, so I did that for this one, and then also I went from JST to XT30. Um, people think JST is good for brushless, it's not. Also, these wires are like crazy small gauge. So I went up and, um, I mean, you can have an XT30, but if you still have really small wires, you're still kind of bottlenecking. So just make sure you have a good gauge wire that pairs with the um, current that you're trying to pass through your connector. So I swapped that one over as well. This one I was able to keep the black plastic and I snipped the um, outside of it and then just ran my wires out and hot glued it and it looks good and it's pretty dang durable and I, I like that way that one turned out. Um, and this one is a Pico a, a micro lossy connector and um, this was the first test and I was like, oh, well I don't know, this battery isn't anything special but when I swapped it over, even with this, um, it made a huge difference with this battery as far as uh, power output from uh, this connector to this connector. Same gauge wire and everything, but yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, the principle behind swapping over the, um, yeah, and see now that's nice and hard, and like that's durable. That's, <laughs> that is probably just as good, if not better, than this uh, black plastic deal. Um, actually, now this is a curious question. Let's take a look at weight. Let's see if I added much weight. So let's just pop this guy on the table. Can y'all see what's reading out? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So zero grams, we'll just throw on one of these. We're looking at 6.4 grams, okay? So that's kind of like the, the original weight. And then we'll throw that on 6.4. So we actually did not add any weight at all. That's pretty awesome. I thought I would have added just a tiny bit of weight. Let's try it again. So, okay, so 6.3. So we're looking at, well, 6.4. I mean, it's... We probably are adding just a tiny, like a fraction of a gram um, in weight, but yeah, it's basically the same. So yeah, that's a, another good reason why you should swap these over because you don't add any weight, but you get more power, more punch out of your batteries. Okay, sorry, that was kind of a messy video, um, but I just wanted to show you all how to do the conversion from the JST 1.25 and then the uh, to the power whoop or the JST 2.0 connector. Um, I'll do another live stream here in a little bit using this awesome power meter and we're going to plug these in and we're going to see exactly how much power we can get out and the difference that the connector makes. All right, real quick, we'll look at some comments. Uh, no comments. Awesome. Oscar Gonzalez sent a smiley face. Thanks, man. Good to see you too. Uh, we'll catch up here in a second. All right.